I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. Gwendolyn, my dear. Not Gwendolyn, my dear. No, uh, Carol, my dear. Uh, I was expecting... I know. Well, here, you can give her this. My fraternity pin. And I want my records back. Now, Carol. Now, you listen to me, Chuck McDonald. If you think for one minute that you can run around with every other girl on the campus and still keep me on the string, you've got another think coming. <laughs> Carol, my child. I hope you're not going to make a scene. Let's be adult. Let's be adult about this. A clean break. No looking back. No tears. No vain regrets. No stirring the ashes of a romance. Ah, knock it off. <laughs> you know, you look silly enough in your Uncle Bob's clothes without trying to use his line. This is my smoking jacket, not Uncle Bob's. Has the new sack look. I mean, the new sick look. <laughs> Powerful. Look, it'll only ten minutes to dry. There, now just have a cup of coffee. Yeah, but Bobby, look, I've got to get. Look at it this way, Carol. We've had fun, great fun, but it was just one of those things, just one of those crazy things. One of those bells that now and then rings. Just one of those things. But time, time is the great healer. Someday you'll look back on all this and laugh. Don't tell me it'll get funnier. <laughs> but you gotta admit the kid knows his lyrics, huh? Oh, listen, you're the one who's to blame for all this. Well, Margaret, don't knock it. With sideburns and a guitar, he could clean up. <laughs> Hey, Bobby, what's it all about? What's it all about? Your nephew is getting a very sweet, lovely girl to brush off. Her son is getting a very sweet and lovely girl to brush off. <laughs> <laughs> Following in your wolf prints, huh? Yeah. Well, the girl is his niece. <laughs> the girl's your niece. <laughs> Following in your wolf prints, eh? Well, now, like uncle, look, like nephew. Absolutely. Oh, now, wait a minute. Carol, my dear, try to understand that the certain men like Uncle Bob and myself are, are simply not meant to be monogamous creatures. We have too much je ne sais quoi, too much savoir faire. We're too blo... You're not taking Fats Domino. Yes, I am. Listen, it's time you had a serious talk with your nephew. Save me. Oh, brother. He comes home from college yesterday with an A in French and he's her son. He pulls a little boo-boo today, and he's my nephew. Well, it's I... your influence, Bobby. It certainly is, so you go in there and straighten your nephew out. Listen, it's... Boy. All right, Margaret, I'll talk to your son. I'll attempt to reason with your son. If that doesn't work, I'll pin your son's ears back. And if you don't, I will. And... <laughs> and I'll help. <laughs> And what's more, Chuck McDonald, if you're not careful, you're going to wind up just like your Uncle Bob. And yeah, what's wrong with that? There's plenty wrong with that. Well, what? Well, plenty. What? Plenty! Well, let me tell you something. I hope I do wind up like Uncle Bob. I'd like to be just half the man he is. Ha! That's some ambition. You bet it is. Uncle Bob's the greatest guy in the world. Well? Well? Anyone lays a hand on my nephew answers to me. <laughs> Silliest bunch of talk I've ever heard in my life. So Chuck's taken after me. I don't see anything so bad about that. Well, I I'm, do. So do I. I'm not. Chuck is studying listen. to be a doctor. He must start now to develop the qualities of steadiness oh, and independence. Margaret, you don't have to be dull to be a doctor. 
I've spent quite a lot of time around the medical profession, and I... Well, I, 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 I... Well, I was in Dr. Chandler's office every day last week. He's in Canada. Well, he's nurse lesson. <laughs> but, Look, Bobby, from my, my standpoint... Just let me make I've, a point here, Harvey. May I, please? Let, let me this say... This is a perfect well, example whenever... of the aimlessness of your life. Nurse chasing. What a waste of time. Uh, not when you catch them. <laughs> Bobby, from me, my standpoint... Just, here, a minute, Harvey, just a minute, Harvey. Just a minute, please. You know how Chuck copies you. Would you like to see him chasing Dr. Chandler's nurse? It is not... Of course not. Well, there you are. Let him find his own. <laughs> From my standpoint, I'm Marvin, please. From you treat this whole thing as a joke, and to me it's very oh, serious. All right, for heaven's sake, I'll be serious. Your son is 18 years old, Margaret. For heaven's sake, let him have a little fun. He'll settle down when the right time comes. <laughs> you said that when you were 18. And how old are you now? <laughs> Listen, every, you're three years younger than you. What does that make it? <laughs> is that what you wanted to say, Marvin? You didn't want to break that. No. Bobby, from my standpoint, I had one a minute ago, and I went. Come to you, I'll be in the shower. So you're going to continue to set a bad example for my son? What's huh? wrong with the kid taking a shower? Oh, my, now I remember what I was going to say. Just a minute, Harvey. Sometime, can't you? Uh, my, you no, know my... good and well the example I'm talking about. All oh, right, Margaret. So, so I haven't settled down. I played the field. I've had a little harmless fun. It's love that makes the world go round. You have to spin it single-handed? <laughs> Margaret, look, some men simply were not meant to be monogamous creatures. We have too much je ne sais quoi, joie de vivre, eh quoi. Oh, say it in English. We're too slippery. <laughs> That's just the trouble. What is it? He's too slippery. He's been getting away with this policy of a love him and leave him. Certainly has. Yeah, to him girls are like paper plates. Throw them away when you're through with them. No washing dishes for him. You said it. One beautiful girl after another. Hey, you were bachelor buddies together. I wish he'd gotten married with you. I wish he'd gotten married instead of me. <laughs> Why, Harvey? Oh, my... <laughs> oh, Margaret, you know, I was only kidding. You know that. Why, Ruthie and I are the hat... Ruthie and... We're like... A... You won't tell Ruthie that I said that, will you? I'll get up, Mom! Gwendolyn, my dear. Mr. Fonda. <laughs> Hiya, Chuck. Is your Uncle Bob home? Yeah, he, he's in the shower, but Mom's in the kitchen. I'll tell her you're here. Oh, don't bother. Don't I'll bother. Go. Hey, Mom! Mr. Fonda's here! <laughs> uh, Chuck, when you become a doctor, I'd like to talk to you about a shattered eardrum. Did you get too close to an engine? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Pat, come on in. He's home. Hi, Paul. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hello, Paul Fonda, you old oh, son of a gun. Oh, You're looking wonderful. I just shot an 86. Oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, who's a beautiful girl? Uh, she's one of my stewardesses. She wants to get in the movies. I promised her Bob would take some glamour pictures of her. We stopped by the office, but I forgot it was Saturday. Oh, oh come on in, Pat. Pat, this is Margaret McDonald, Harvey Helm. Patricia Plummer. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do, Miss Plummer? How do you do? I wonder if Bob would mind taking some pictures of Pat here at the house. We've got the night flight back to Mexico City. Oh, no, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Come on in the living room. Thank you. Sit down here and be comfortable. I'll get thank Bob. You. I think he's upstairs. Oh, Paul, let me hang that up. <laughs> so pretty. Well, thank you. Since Pat's from Texas, I thought she ought to have a picture as a southern belle. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. Uh, what became of your southern accent? Oh, I left that at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. <laughs> oh, that's a nice smile training for a stewardess. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, Pat. Thank you. Well, then, what part of Texas are you from, Miss Plummer? San Antonio. Oh, uh, that sure brings back fond memories, eh, Harv? Oh, sure does. Randolph Field, Air Force Reserve, five years ago. Uh, six. Six? Was it really? Mm -hmm. My golly, you're right. Well, then, you know Mr. Collins. No, we've never met. What? Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful girl within a 50-mile radius of Randolph and the flying wolf didn't find you? <laughs> well, the Air Force boys didn't come around very much. Oh? You see, my father's the sheriff. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and her two brothers are Texas Rangers. Oh, too bad. I had hoped you were the past that would catch up with Brother Bob. Oh. Uh, his past will never catch up with him. He's too slippery. <laughs> You know the line he used to pull when a girl got too serious? No, it. I furnished the mood music. Oh, that's right, Harv. Sure. Well, uh, now, 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 remember that Bobby outranked me. Anyway, um, he used to bring his dates into the officers' club, and he'd always arrange to have a table with a lighted candle. You're beautiful, Hazel. My name's Francis. <laughs> You didn't let me finish. Your beautiful hazel eyes thrill me. <laughs> My eyes are brown. Oh, yeah, but not in the candlelight. You see, in the candlelight, they're hazel with little tiny flecks of gold. Oh, you should always have candlelight and music. Yasha, play. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. You think of everything, Major Collins. Bob. You know, I've been telling my folks about you. And they want me to bring you home so they can meet you. Bob. Yeah, Major Collins, I forgot we're in the officer's club. <laughs> well, anyway, Major, Mama's planning on a great big family dinner next Sunday. And you're to be the guest of honor. Are you sure it isn't just infatuation? No, Major. It's love. Would you be willing to put our love to the test? What test? The test of time. We we'll go our separate ways for a while. And when we meet again, we'll be sure if it's the real thing. But how do I know I'll ever see you again? Give me your hand. Wear this, uh, friendship ring. And then, if time proves our love to be true, we'll change it to this thing. And now, over to St. Hazel. Francis. Yeah, Francis. <laughs> Since it's goodbye, Bob. Goodbye. Oh, he hasn't been within a thousand miles of San Antonio since. No. He did that to a Texas girl? A Texas girl? He did that to half the female population. Well, he ought to be ashamed. Maybe he will be. Margaret, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I hope that you're both thinking what I'm thinking. Patricia, would you like to do a little acting? For the honor of Texas? And the good of my son? All right. That's pretty hammy. Oh, that she is. <laughs> oh, give me your left hand. I can just get this off. Ah. With this ring, I be cast in the role of a girl from the bachelor's past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that look, Harley. Oh, perfect, perfect. Except that the ones that Bob gave out only cost a buck. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Bob. Oh, hi, Chuck. Hi. Well, say, uh, Chuck, was that somebody at the door just now? Carol, she decided to pass down the record of mine. Yeah. I see she let you have it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mr. Fonda came while you were in the shower. Really? Well, I trust your mother's feeding him. I guess so. Uncle Chuck, Bob. You know, there's something terribly familiar about this, uh, smoking jacket here. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of like the one you used to have. Yeah. <laughs> a little big for you, too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I haven't got any tobacco in it right now. I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uncle Bob. Chuck. My pearl cufflinks, have you seen them anywhere? No, sir, those I didn't take. If... I'll help you look. Look, Bob, no, they're not... I'm sorry, for heaven's sake, Chuck. Why don't you leave things alone? Holy smoke, well, what are all these rings? Yeah, nothing, nothing, Chuck. Just part of my Air Force Reserve equipment, that's all. How do you use a ring? Never here? mind, Chuck, never mind. What would you come up to see me about? Well, to talk to you about Carol. Girls sure are a problem to brush off. Well, not when you know how, Chuck. I, I used to have a line that, uh, that never failed. Boy, I sure wish you'd tell me about it. Hey, that'll be Gwendolyn. Excuse yeah. me. Gwendolyn, my dear. I'm afraid I'm not Gwendolyn, but could I come in anyway? Yeah. Where is it, Chuck? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Are you the Miss Plummer who phoned from the airport? Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, how do you do? I'm Margaret, and this is my son, Chuck. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Chuck. Yeah. Shall we go in the living room? Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, uh, what now, Chuck? Oh, yeah, the brush-off line. Yeah, I need a come-on line first. first. Yeah. You know what just happened? No. This beautiful girl came to the door, and I just stood there with my mouth open. What should I have said? Uh, a beautiful girl, huh? Yeah, yeah, what should I have said? Uh, well, you should have said, wait right here, I'll call my Uncle Bob. No, please, <laughs> no, man, Uncle Bob, I can't think on my feet like you do. Chuck, you always fall back on an old standard, then, like, uh, haven't we met somewhere before? Where'd oh, she go? I wouldn't want to use that, it's been done. That's like saying you wouldn't want to make money in the oil business because it's been done. It works, son. That's why it's a standard. Where'd she go? In the living room with Mom. Want to see it work? <laughs> oh, Margaret, honey. See, I won't be home for dinner, so I thought... Oh, excuse me. Well, Here he is, Patricia. <laughs> uh, Patricia Plummer, my brother Bob. Oh, how, how do you do, Miss... Say, haven't we met somewhere before? I think we have. <laughs> yes, and just where was that? San Antonio. Oh, San Antonio, of course. <laughs> yes, well, it, it, it's so nice to, to, to see you again. <laughs> yes, well, goodbye, Miss... Um... <laughs> goodbye, Margaret. She's all yours, Chuck. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, Mexico. Mexico! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, golly, you're right, Chuck. It is so loose, isn't it? Yeah, come on, I'll take you to Dr. Christensen's office. Oh, Miss mm -hmm. Plummer came all the way from San Antonio to see you. Yeah, but this is an... Oh, she did? I sure enough did, Major. Major? Oh, you're looking for Major Collins? Oh, that's your mistake. See, I I'm Colonel Collins. Bye. You were a major when you were in Turkey. <laughs> I'd be careful. You're going to lose that tooth, boy. <laughs> Mom and Dad are going to be real happy to hear that you're all the Colonel now. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, because, you know, Daddy's worried about us getting along on a major's pay. Oh, Daddy's worried. <laughs> you remember Daddy? Daddy? He's the sheriff. D oh, Daddy. <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, that's Paul Fonda. Uh-huh. I have to go talk to him. That's Paul Fonda. Paul Fonda. Paul, 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 old friend, old buddy, old pal. You, you gotta help me because I, I, I'm in a little trouble. Oh, what's up? Uh, well, see, I'm in a jam. Jam. Margaret's homemade strawberry jam. No, Paul. That, that is... Have a safe you ever think about stuff in your face? Well, okay. Margaret well, invited me, but if this is a sample of your hospitality, forget so it. So long. Oh, <laughs> oh you were just joking, weren't you? Yeah. I 
was just joking. Here, let me hang this up for you. Oh, Paul, you're always so welcome here. There's nothing I'd rather see than you stuff in your... I mean, enjoy your father's food. See? I even buttered it for you, Paul. Now, Paul, remember when we were at Randolph at the Air Force Reserve training program four or five years ago? Um, six. I... Six. She was at six... Hey. Hey, maybe the statute of limitations... Why? What about it? Oh, well, see, there's a girl out here who, who claimed... Well, obviously, she's got me mixed up with someone else because I never saw her before in all my life, and, and neither did you. Well, so what do you want from me? Yeah, well, see, I, I want you to go out and, and tell her that we, we've never seen her before. Well, how do I know you've never seen her? <clears throat> yeah. Well, if you, you've never seen her, I've never seen her. See, we were together constantly. <laughs> well, how do I know I've never seen her? Yeah. So, you know, you're probably the someone she's got me mixed up with. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said we were together constantly. Right. If you've never seen her, then I've never seen her. Right, see, that's just my point. I want you to go out there and tell her that, that we've never seen her. <laughs> what? Look, well, well, not until I have a look at her. No, Paul, look. You, you can have a look. Now, watch. Come over here. Now, now, now take a look. Out there. Did you ever see that girl before in all your life? I didn't even see her then. <laughs> What's wrong with your eyes, anyway? Try it again. Now there. Oh, the <laughs> sheriff's daughter. She's a. <laughs> you mean you recognized her? Oh, sure. Don't you remember? All the guys warned one another to stay away from her. Oh, brother, why didn't somebody warn me? Well, since when has a warning ever kept Bob, you away from her? What's keeping you? Nothing. I'm leaving immediately. Oh, Bob. 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 Oh. Thought you were going to introduce me? How? I don't even know her. If she. You all don't know me. No, I... Bob, darling, how can you all say that? Could, could you... After all the sweet, tender promises you all made that night? Honey, if you... <laughs> what night? Well, the night you all gave me this ring. And I'm ready now to have you put it on this finger. You mean m move it over here? <laughs> and spoil a beautiful friendship? <laughs> Mr. Plummer, look, look, I don't remember you, honestly. You must have me mixed up with somebody else. If oh, you... Bobby! Oh, Yasha. Oh, uh, Bobby! <laughs> I walked off with your number four iron by mistake. Look, I'm awfully sorry. You, for heaven's but sake, it's... keep it hard. Well, thank have you. Have you ever seen this girl before in all your life? <laughs> well, no, I can't say that. That's I it, Arm. Have fun. Play golf. Wait a minute. Boy. Wait a minute. Bobby, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. Margaret, would you get a lighted candle for me, please? What? Young, what? Young lady, would you mind? Right, what are you doing here, please? Listen to this. Bobby, you sit down. I just sit right there. Wait a minute. Has just... anybody got a violin? <laughs> a violin? I'll take it. It's all right. It's all right. This is so Please, it'll lean close together. Da di da 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 di da da. Please, please lean closer together. Da di da 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 da. Pat Plummer. Oh, Bobby. Oh, congratulations! You finally found a love that stood the test of time. Oh, and you couldn't want a lovelier girl. Hard to sit down here, old boy. How's the sheriff? What do you mean, is that? Really? Tell me, who are those two older brothers of yours? The ones who were in the Texas Rangers? Well, they're out here now, you know, and they've become professional wrestlers. No. Oh, well, we'll all have to be wrestlers. Start planning a shower for you, Oh, that's a wonderful idea. I came in with you. Mexico City. Your pilot tonight will be Captain Fonda and your cook. Uh, and your stewardess is the sheriff's daughter from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, sir, no one's allowed in there but the pilots. I know, and after I throw Fonda overboard, that's what I'll be.
was played by King Donovan, Paul Fonda by Lyle Talbot, Carol Henning by Olive Sturgis, Patricia Plummer by Connie Towers, and Francis by Laurie Anders. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. Thank <laughs> you.